As an application provider, the first thing you're most likely going to do is onboard devices. And with Setit, the process couldn't be simpler. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of bulk onboarding devices using a CSV method. Now, before we get started, everything we talk about today can be found on our documentation site at docs.seneco.io. There's three categories, developer, which is our free account, which allows you to play with developer devices and a developer gateway. There's a RAIN provider section, which is radio access network providers, who mainly deal with base stations and onboarding, provisioning, and maintaining networks. But for this video, we're going to focus on application provider and specifically the device management section. Now again, everything we talk about can all be found here, and even right here, our registered state, our activated state. But no documentation today, let's get started. I'm going to go back into our application provider account and dive into our device management section. And this is where we really do the bulk of the work. Now, we prefer a bulk CSV method, which is really using a CSV file to upload. And all we require is a dev UI column for unique device EUIs and an app key column for unique application keys. And if you've noticed, I have a duplicate right here. And I'm going to leave that there for now, just for fun, to show you how it works. So let's start. Let's start the bulk upload process by clicking the Upload CSV icon. The actions are register and activate. Register, that's what it sounds like, just get those devices recorded on the network. And activate is the process in which we allow the device to actually join the network. So first, let's register. We'll select the CSV file that I just showed you, hit open, and upload. Now, we require a two-factor authentication when are registering devices, and this is because even if your account becomes compromised, the attacker would still require access to your email account to do bulk registrations. So I'm going to go ahead and hit request token, and that's going to be sent to my email address on file. And as that comes in, I'll just type that here and hit submit. Now this next window is where we hit some specifications. We specify a contract, a device profile, and tags. A contract is really a billing agreement between Senate and the application provider. You always have at least one and maybe a few others depending on your engagement. So we'll just hit default for now. Device profiles is what I like to call sort of instructions for your devices. You can use a profile to set your devices to operate a certain way, such as have a minimum data rate of, say, 1, or operate on a frequency with some channels grayed out. But for now, we're going to use default just to go through the process. Tags is a very interesting setup where you can specify a way to group your devices. For this example, I want to use just group A. Now, we'll hit yes. and Again, if you're paying attention, we're going to hit an error. And right here, duplicate key, can't move forward, ending in 3-0. So let's go back to our CSV, make that fix, hit save, and try it again. Nothing wrong with a little repetition. I'll grab our CSV, I'll grab a new token, because if I haven't mentioned before, tokens are a one-use token, so this one expired the minute we tried to use it and they last for up to five minutes. I'll enter that now. Hit submit. We'll select our same parameters. Enter our tag of group A. And you can actually enter multiple groups as well. But for now, we'll just use one. Hit yes. And there's our result set. 10 are registered under this application. Zero updated, zero not changed, and zero errors. Now, these devices have been registered. Now, what we want to do is activate them. So let's click one, and next to Upload CSV, we have an Activate and Deactivate button. This makes the process much simpler. If we click that with a highlighted device, we can then verify the contract and device profile that we want to use, and even the tags that we still want to use. So for the contract, we'll just select the defaults as well. And for tags, we don't have to add any since we already added a group A and click yes. 
and just like that the device is activated it'll be able to join the network anytime after now now just to show you the tag functionality we can type in group A hit enter and we'll get that result set right here this is the group A tag that we defined for this group of devices we'll just clear that selection now so what happens when a device tries to join but it's not activated and this is a good question because ideally devices will be deployed and they'll attempt to join right away for this example I can just showcase it what I have here is a multitech x dot attached to my computer and I'll just show you the parameters of it it has the network ID set to the application ID that we're working with and here's the network key that we specified in the CSV file I'm gonna go ahead and hit AT join and I am under public coverage but this will allow us to look into the events section of our application provider tab and look for a log of this so it did not come in yet so let's try again and you can see my log output on this terminal here we're using channel 69.911 and we'll look for this again hit refresh in the events and there we go disallowing join join device not activated and here's the join server here's the device UI the log and even the gateway is trying to join through so easy fix right go back to our device management go to the device itself hit activate select any contract or profiles you want and just for clarity when you select a contract during activation you can't change the contract unless you deactivate the device later for this I'll actually enter another tag let's do group B and there we go we've activated it now let's go back to our device and try to join again join successful now let's go back to our application we can go to the devices tab and search on the group B that I gave it during activation there it is shows up here and you can even click into it if you want look at the transactions and there's some past history because I've used this device in the past so I really hope this helps you get started with onboarding your devices in a simple manner because the process really is as simple as it should be and again if you have any questions always go to our documentation site and check out our device management section